Hi, everybody. So I'm a children's book author and an artist, and I love animals. I'm obsessed with animals. And I went to the Los Angeles Zoo to hear a lecture about African elephants that was given by a woman named Cynthia Moss, who studies elephants in Ambasali, Kenya. And I was just blown away. I, I listened and I, I always loved elephants, but a person who was sitting next to me said, Karen, if you love elephants that much, you need to go to Africa. And I got to work planning a trip and I went with um, a couple of girlfriends and our kids and, and um, we went on safari. I'm trying to hang up the phone here. <laughs> and it was one of the most amazing things. At the time I was studying poetry and the tools of poetry, repetition, rhythm, rhyme, alliteration, all of the tools of poetry are important in writing children's books. And when I was on the safari, I watched all these things and I took notes because a lot of poetry, a great part of poetry is based on observation and how you feel about what you observe and using those tools. So I took notes and I asked the guides lots of questions. And when I came home, I started shaping the, the notes that I learned and, and the things that I learned into poetry. And um, as a result, I, I wrote the poetry and then I started making a book dummy. And then I did paintings. And that's my book, Can You Spot the Leopard? So I'm gonna read it to you and I'm gonna talk about the poems as I read them. But I wanted to create the experience of a safari for all of the children who read this book. But my deeper purpose is to let you know about the animals, to educate you, and hopefully you'll care about them kind of the way I do. Thank you. So, um, okay. Um, I'm still, am I still on the screen or can you see it? We could see uh, your screen, yes. You can see um, can, the cover of the book. Yep. Okay. It's a noisy household. <laughs> can you spot the leopard? Climb inside the Jeep, we'll drive the bumpy road, spurting pebbles, dust, dirt, keeping alert. Hundreds of flamingos gather at daybreak, bending slender necks, waiting on thin legs, dipping beaks into the lake to scoop krill quickly before jackals awake. This um, safari will go from morning to evening and there's no break for lunch. But the flamingos are out early and they're pink because they eat krill, which are tiny little pink shrimp. This is a haiku, three lines with five syllables, seven syllables and five syllables. Acacias appear bursting with blossoms until the white storks scatter. I saw an acacia tree 
which is the favorite food of giraffes. And it was filled with what appeared to be white blossoms, but they all flew away. She drops into the world wet and in a moment struggles to rise on wobbly legs. The newborn gazelle shakes and quivers. She totters and her knees buckle. She starts up again, but her legs splay. She kicks off, pushes harder, up, up, until she is standing. Time to take her first steps. Across the, gra across the wet, grassy plain, five ostriches run in a line, girls in front, one boy behind, not an ostrich out of place, 10 long legs keeping pace. This is how ostriches live, one male and several females. And this is how they move along. The male stands behind. They're kind of called a harem. I wondered about um, the animals and why their tails wag, because I think that my dogs wag their tails when they're happy. So I asked the guide and based on what he told me, I wrote this poem. Gazelles, zebras, wildebeest graze all day. Their bodies still as statues, but their tails sway. Back and forth, wagging fast, wagging slow. The reason why? swatting flies. In the morning, the elephants come out. They're herbivores. They only eat greens. And um, their skin is very sensitive. So um, they cover it with mud and water. And her calf stands close between her legs. Mother elephant sucks up water in her trunk. She raises it above her head, her great faucet sways, whoosh, wet, windy sprays, mother-daughter showers. So that's what I mean about metaphors. Her trunk reminded me of a great big faucet. He rolls his boulder body into thick mud, sloshing his trunk like wet rope. He dunks and splashes in the cool wallow. This is a big word now a euphoric elephant sunk in soothing slime. I wanted to use that word euphoric, which means very happy because I love the way it sounded with elephant. And when you compare something and use the word like or as, slashing his trunk like wet rope, that's called a simile. And euphoric elephant and soothing slime or sunken soothing slime or alliteration. I've used the same initial letter. Elephants gather with their kin. One mother bellows above the din, her smallest beneath her legs, another by her side, her oldest following behind. She moves them off to eat, to drink and escape the sun. Then she leads them back in a run. Ears flapping, chins tucked in, aunts, uncles, cousins greet them with roars, snorts, and rumbles. Trunks touch, tusks clack, a celebration of welcome back. Elephants live in herds and sometimes the herds break off to go and get water or dust themselves. And then they all come back and there is a lot of tumult, um, congratulations, happiness, and snorts, roars, and rumbles. And elephants live in these herds and they're matriarchal. They're headed by the old female who has the wisdom and passes it down. And the females stay together for life. And the males at 12 to 14 years of age go off and live in loose groups of other males. His foreleg kips his foreleg kicks up dust. He flaps his ears and shakes his head in angry thrusts. Bull elephant's trunk furls high, loudly trumpeting a warning cry, steer clear. 
the Maasai warriors used to hunt the elephants. And when the elephants sniff, they have keen sense of smell better than their eyesight. But if they smell of Maasai, they get angry and defensive. And we were riding in a Jeep, giving a Maasai warrior a ride back to his village when this elephant got angry. All of the things that I experienced, I saw, I learned, they happened. She spears a snake, gulps it whole. There it goes on a lumpity bumpity trek down inside Stork's long neck. Giraffe leaves her calf near acacia trees to nibble and wanders off to nibble leaves. Not far away, she munches tender tops. Suddenly, she stops to listen, watch. Danger! Quickly, she lopes back to protect her calf. Sometimes they have to leave their calf alone. Sometimes one giraffe stays and watches several babies, almost like a giraffe um, a kindergarten. <laughs> And that happens. A cheetah, okay, this is a cheetah. A step, then two, cheetah stops, she waits. She moves again, she sights her prey. She leaves her cub behind a mound and slowly creeps along the ground. She halts once more, she hesitates, back and forth. She turns her face to eye her cub, to spot her prey. She crouches, pounce, food today. Whose furry face is watching from its hidden grassy seat, waiting hungrily for mama's meat to eat? Does a zebra foal know its mother from the pattern of her stripes, from the sound of her whinny, from the smell of her fur? or just by staying close to her. I think from what I learned, it's all of the above. White egrets perch atop Rhino's back, hitching a ride. His eyes are weak, so Rhino stops more than he goes. When he's too slow, his stowaways know to flap their wings and fly away. A topi is a kind of antelope. Topi stands like a chieftain atop his dirt mound, looking over the plains, searching grasses to graze, watching for danger. Under his hooves, termites bore out new tunnels. All over the plains, there are these big dirt mounds and they were built by tiny little termites who live and create tunnels. And there's a lot of moisture and right around them, uh, lots of plants grow. So animals come to graze around them. Ah, a wildebeest. Wildebeest is a mixed up puzzle, a bit of moose around the muzzle. Horse legs long and thin, but body and skin like a buffalo. The closest kin to this jumbled stew is the new, the two are in fact the same, the only difference, the name. So many adults who've read my book say to me, I didn't know a new and a wildebeest are the same, but now you know, just has two different names. Meerkats. Meerkats recline on the dusty earth while one watches from atop his berth. He's protecting the sun worshipers, soaking up sunshine their favorite pastime. If there's danger, he gives a signal and they all hurry to their cave, their den. Guinea chicks follow their mama hen. Oh, but where did they go? Off the path they wander so, into the grass, stuck in the brush. They need to come back. Mama's in a rush to get back to the nest. Her chicks must rest. No, her chicks must eat and she must rest. I 
the mother hen was trying to keep track of all these babies and they were wandering all over the place. Dick dicks. Dick dicks are small deer. Dick dicks always a pair. Nibble green leaves. Stop and stare. Disappear. Reappear. Then retreat back into the bush, darting in and out, playing hide and seek. That's what they reminded me of because there they were, then they were gone, then they came back in a slightly different place. They're checking for danger and they're trying to eat at the same time. Mother lions lie side by side with their cubs, resting on rocks. Father presides on the top ledge, alone on his throne, protecting his pride. Mostly during the day, the lions are sleeping and at night they hunt, but the females are the ones that hunt and then the males eat first, then the females, then the cubs. But unlike other wild cats like cheetahs and tigers, which are not found in Africa, but in Asia, lions live in prides, family groups. The other uh, wild cats are solitary or sometimes cheetahs live with their brothers. This is a funny looking bird. Marabou stork struts about on spindly legs. Atop his thick red wrinkled neck sits a great bald head with deep dark eyes, fuzzy peaks a pointed beak. His black wings drape a thick night cape around his hunched, paunchy shape. Silly old man. When I observed him, I wrote things down about him, but I couldn't help but think he reminded me of a silly old man. Spotted hyena cubs drink milk from their mother. She licks their faces and off they run to scratch and bite each other. Mother makes sure she stays alert. Her young play wild and rough. One cub could get hurt. Hyenas live also in groups, matriarchal groups, where they're headed by the female and they hunt in packs and they're very skilled hunters. On the grassy plain, the black rhino sits idle, a stalled armor truck. This is a haiku again, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, and the Black Rhino reminded me of an armored truck. An old warped barge, long and slow, gliding in repose, skimming the surface, seeming to smile, a contented crocodile. So when a poet looks around, he sees things, and again, he writes down what it reminds him of, what he feels about them. Not all poetry is based on that, but so much of poetry is. Galloping by the river, zebras in flight make blurring patterns of black and white. Moving in the water, their world reflections of light and dark spin into motion art. This is something we saw that made us very sad. Wildebeest stampede across the plain, a hurricane trampling grass, whirling dust in the air, and one small wildebeest searches for his mother everywhere. We all hoped that he would find his mother. First aardvarks build their den. When their babies grow, they go. Hyenas move in then. When they go, warthog, warthogs come to burrow. When they go, Jackals arrive at this place. They want more room. Growing families need space. Nothing gets wasted. One group of animals after another uses it, uses the den. A bushback is um, an antelope. Bushback jumps high, darts and prances, dances and spins, her hoofs fly anything to keep lion from finding the tall grass where her fawn sleeps. Deer do the same thing as antelopes. They 
cover their baby and try and hide the smell. Um, just they have to go off to eat and then they come back and they're hopefully, hopefully their baby is protected. Every day, hippos choose to lull and soak and sprawl in ooze. At night, they climb out of the mud to search for grass with grunts and thuds. Next day, they repeat doing what they choose to lull and soak and sprawl in ooze. When they come out at night, they're considered the most dangerous animal of all. People think they're heavy and slow, but they're very fast. So stay away. Back to their burrow, warthog father, mother's babies trot in a line. Lion, four tails like flags pop up, 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 up. Back to their burrow, warthog father, mother, babies run, 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 run. When their tails are up like flags, it is a sign that they perceive danger. Vervets are monkeys. <laughs> Vervets are everywhere, cavorting in trees, climbing on branches, scooting through leaves, swinging by their tails, jumping around. But when an eagle hovers, not a vervet can be found. When I did this painting, I wasn't sure I really liked it. It seemed a little blurry to me. So I did another painting with more detail, but that's not how I saw the vervets. They were always moving, they were a blur. So I went back to this painting. Okay, so someone online wrote they thought this um, picture was disgusting, but this is life in the animal world. They make the kill, so lions are first to feast. They rip apart the meat. Even before the lions are done, a cackle of hyenas come, hoping they'll get to eat. Jackals come by and wait. Vultures are last to arrive. They clean the plate. And vultures are so important to keep the environment clean. They're endangered in Africa. And um, it's really important that they're saved because they stop a lot of bad diseases from spreading by cleaning the earth. All morning, baboons pick, pick, pick each other's fur. All evening, baboons pick, pick, pick each other's fur. They pick, pick, pick to get the parasites before they bite. Okay, we're getting into evening. By day, bad ear foxes conceal themselves from sight, but their eyes glisten like small moons in the night. When we arrived in Africa, it was evening and we took an evening drive. We had never been to Africa before and we parked under a tree and there were two lions up in the tree right above us. And we were so scared. We were crouching down at the bottom of the Jeep, but really there was nothing to be afraid of. They were sleeping. High in a tree, two lions rest, light fades, sun sets. One suddenly rises with thunderous roars, but the other sleeps and snores, snores. Guinea, hen, guinea hens squawk, squawk, because lion stalks. They're the ones that warn about the lion. So here's the poem. Can you spot the leopard in a glint of moonlight, slipping out to stalk under cover of the night? Can you spot his pattern through the shadow of the trees, a prowler in the dark, stealing past on silent feet? Can you spot his tail above the swaying reeds as he hunts his quarry in a spurt of might and speed? Can you spot the leopard in the waning moonlight? high in the branches feeding under cover of the night. They hunt at night and then the leopards drag their uh, prey. Often it's a gazelle 
up into a tree and feed and they leave it up in the tree and come back to feed off of it for days, actually for evenings. Well, days too, but they're really sometimes hard to spot. I only saw one from far away, but on a subsequent trip, I got to see a mother and, and cub. Also, um, this book, the, the poems were written based on a safari in Kenya and Tanzania, but I wanted to focus on the animals and they move between borders. So um, I, I, I didn't specify what countries. It's late, time to return to camp, wash up, eat and sleep under a vast blanket of stars, dreaming safari dreams. And in the back of this book, there's more information about the animals. All right. Okay. Man, that was great. I love that. I, as I said, I wanted to create the experience of a safari and two of my three sons went with me and when I went through the poetry, I said, remember this, remember that. All of these things were things we experienced. And I wanna show you, um, I did art. I've always worked in oils, but you have to use chemicals. And um, here's the painting for the leopard. It's done in something called gouache, which is opaque watercolor and acrylic paints. And, um, when I did the one of the foxes, I did this, I did this painting first. And I realized that these are Cape foxes and they're only found in South Africa. I painted the wrong foxes. I just want you to understand that there's always mistakes. <laughs> and I had to do another one. And these are, the ones that are found in Kenya and Tanzania, they're bat air foxes, those huge ears. And this is the painting that I did of the lions. This way. 